Okay, so we're here in Flagstaff, Arizona, meeting up with our friends Ben and Amy, who we met back last year at the RV Entrepreneur Summit. At the time, neither of us were actually living, like neither couple was living on the road. So this is super exciting that we're here and uh, meeting up with them. And we're gonna do an interview with Amy, who is a professional organizer and runs her own business doing that. So let's go see what they're up to. So, maybe before we jump into the interview with Amy, we're gonna get a little bit of a tour of their rig. Come on in. My name's Amy Olson. I have a company called Life Done Simply. I'm a productivity and organizing professional. I help people downsize and declutter, mostly in life transitions, so death, divorce, relocation, job change, anything that sparks a sliver of an idea that, hey, we have too much stuff and we'd like to live more simply. Um, so I was actually working in a career where I was pretty unhappy and I realized that if I was going to leave the career I'd have to make a pretty drastic life change um, just economically. And so um, both me and my partner Ben started downsizing um, our apartment and our possessions and through that process I realized that I was clinging to a lot of things for these unknowns. Um, just. Uh, ideas of what I was supposed to have and who I was supposed to be and it was costing me a lot of money. So through that downsizing process I sparked some curiosity within myself and realized that this was something I really wanted to do for other people. So I found the National Association of Professional Organizers and through them became a member and did training um, to become a productivity and organizing professional. Um, currently I work with clients in Minnesota but all throughout the country I do virtual organizing um, while I'm on the road living in the RV. Downsizing is really important because it keeps us present in our lives. Even if you don't have something that you're specifically downsizing for, like let's say a, a job change, a, a, you know, you're moving to a new city or you want to live in an RV, I think it's really important to be intentional every day with how you live and your surroundings. and. Having a practice of downsizing or decluttering can help you really stay present and intentional no matter what you're doing. The biggest hurdles around downsizing, hands down, is guilt and fear. Um, a lot of people have a hard time letting go based out of obligations and guilt from other people around them, friends, family, coworkers. Um, so they're really not thinking about themselves whatsoever in the process. They're thinking about the, the impact that their decision to downsize has on other people. And fear. A lot of people are very fearful of getting rid of items that they've accumulated over time, whether it be a year or 20 years just because that's all they've ever known and maybe they've spent a certain sum of money on these items uh, or maybe something was given to them by somebody who's no longer with them and so there's all of that always circulating in their brain and causing them to make decisions not what's best for their life but what's best for others. My biggest hurdle actually was a big surprise to me so we had downsized from 1400 square feet to 900 square feet to 500 before we moved into 180 square feet here behind me. And so I thought I had it all figured out, especially as a professional organizer. But then I got to my entertaining stuff. So I love to entertain, no matter how we lived before, I love to host 
the holiday party. I love to have people over. I love to cook and make appetizers. And I realized as I was looking at a table full of platters and serving ware and glassware, I was really struggling to get rid of it. And I employed a technique on myself that I use with clients, which is I ask yourself why three times. And, you know, why is this important to me? Well, I love to entertain. You know, why, is, why do I love to entertain? Because it makes other people happy. Why is it important for me to make other people happy? And through that process, kind of self-analyzing why I was so attached to this stuff, I could realize it's okay. I can make people happy in another way now in my new life. That this represents only just a stage, a chapter in my life and now I'm moving on. And it made it very easy to then separate myself from the items and then find them a good home. I think a good technique for most people to try is a 30-day decluttering challenge. Just very simply, on day one, you're gonna take one item from your home and it can be as small as a pen that doesn't work. So you have a big jar of pens and you have one in there that doesn't work. Maybe you have 20 in there that don't work. But on day one, you're just getting rid of the one pen. On day two, you're getting rid of two items, three, three items. At the end of 30 days, you've gotten rid of 465 items. And this is a good gradual way for most people to introduce themselves into decluttering. It's not, you know, we're not attack, tackling grandma's fine china. We're not getting rid of something that your husband maybe gave you. We're not tackling paperwork, which has a lot of stigma to it. We're just tackling the items around you that really are irritants, that cause you no joy, have no purpose in your life. And this is to give you a good framework to know that there's probably a lot more you know, you can do this for one, two, three, four, five months and infinity. I mean, I still practice this um, on a fairly daily basis. This is just to warm up that decluttering bone. Now, if you're really advanced and you're more of a, I gotta dive headfirst in no matter what I try, I think a packing party is perfect. This isn't my original idea, but the idea is to pack up everything you have and only unpack those items as you need them and as you as you want to use them. And what this does is this shows us that at the end of some period of time, you can define that time, anything you haven't unpacked, you can look at with a different lens and know maybe this isn't as important to me as I once thought it was. Maybe I don't need this the way I thought I did. Um, just again, it's, it's to jolt us a little bit from our daily habits and just start thinking about our stuff in a fresh eye. Decluttering is a pointless practice if you're not monitoring what's coming in. And I always say that that is probably your the biggest reason for backsliding. You know, things are coming in, not only from friends and family and gifts, but you you head to your favorite department store, you head to your favorite, you know, clothing store, whatever, and you see that new item that catches your eye. And what I will say is after you've established a practice of really being intentional with what you're surrounding yourself with and you've gone through that decluttering challenge, you are more likely to at least ask yourself your first why when you're in the store. And for me, again, I'm asking, I'm doing the whys. Why do I want this? Well, it's cheap, it's here, it's cute. You know, we, you know, around the holidays, we tend to see a lot of decor items that have no purpose other than they're there and they remind us of the holidays. And so if we ask ourselves why, why, and why, why is this triggering something within me? Again, it's not, it's not to feel bad about those desires. I mean, we, I think the average is we see about 5,000 advertisements per day. We're, we're at a loss. You know, we're, it's hard to win against that. <laughs> um, we are being marketed to. Um, at a pace that we've never seen before. But if we can pause in that moment and say why, why am I wanting this? And then thinking about what were our goals? What, why did we start decluttering in the first place? Why did we want to downsize in the first place? And see if we can say, you know, does this actually fit into that story? And if it doesn't, you know, then hopefully we have the, the peace of mind to step away from that. But again, it's all a practice. I'm not perfect. Um, you know, I still go into stores and I see things that I want and um, 
it, it gets better the smaller you live and, and the longer you practice, um, it gets easier. My opinion on how it should be tackled has changed with time and just my experience with working with clients. I've had clients who struggle with chronic disorganization all the way to people who just want things to be very clean and, and neat and, and, and they have no attachment issues. So this, this is a, a loaded answer because I, I want people who, who really struggle with disorganization and clutter to know that um, these mainstream things, the trend we're seeing with Marie Kondo and the minimalists and and all these other, uh, Gretchen Rubin and all these other decluttering gurus out there, I don't want anyone to be disheartened if they can't achieve what they see. The first thing you should do is really establish a goal. Um, to want to declutter just because you're seeing something on TV or in this video um, isn't going to get you to your end result that you're really looking for. Really understand why do I want to declutter? Why is my stuff feeling like it's getting in the way? Um, and having something that you can look back on. So I always say producing a value statement, what is valuable to me? Um, what do I want my life to look like? and then also having a vision map for that. You know, this, to want your house to be clear of clutter, to want your RV to be clear of clutter is, is one thing, but why? Because your why is what's gonna bring you back to your, every time you have a hard time, when you face that thing that you're struggling with. You know, maybe it's, it's uh, too much camera equipment or too much entertaining um, platters or maybe it's too many clothes. Or, if you have your why that you can go back to, I say there's no specific technique that is better than another, other, except to have a very, very clear goal in mind. But then I'd say start with, start small. Smart with, start with those very small things every day that you know you don't need. And be, give yourself some grace <laughs> in that. It doesn't have to look like it does on Pinterest. It doesn't have to look like it does on Instagram. Nobody lives that way. That's all produced. Um, and you know, if, if you take it too seriously, it just becomes another metric for perfection and we can get really disheartened in that. So I always say just give yourself a lot of grace and tackle it in the way that makes sense for you. Now, if you are really don't know where to start or you're really struggling with where should I take my stuff or I'd really like to repurpose my things or gosh you know I decluttered a lot but now I just don't know how to get things organized reaching out to a professional organizer is a great way to get some tips and tricks you don't have to invest a lot of money into that um, but, but again sometimes it's just good to have a neutral third party take a look at your situation and uh, they will be able to see things that you um, may not be able to so I am on Instagram at Life Done Simply, but m most importantly, you can get a lot of information off my website at lifedonesimply.com. Um, I do keep my social media presence fairly low because again, that's just another part of my life that I've chosen to declutter and keep simple. So um, if you'd like to reach out to me, you can certainly reach out to me at Amy at lifedonesimply.com or um, read some of my blog posts at lifedonesimply.com. I also offer a monthly virtual coaching program called Simplify You and in that program it, we really take whatever goal you have in mind and we build off of that throughout the month. Uh, four weeks of actionable steps uh, where we talk about physical space and decluttering but we also talk about digital um, self-care, and then uh, productivity and time management as well. You know, as RVers, the climate changes all the time, mm -hmm. wherever we are, and then things break down. So there's definitely those just-in-case items you need. Mm -hmm. But I think we're navigating now a little bit easier. What is just-in-case? What is just for when? Right. And I kind of like to subscribe to more we're going to hold on to this just for when, for when we're in the desert or for when we're in the mountains or for, mm -hmm. or for when something happens electrical in the RV and we need to fix it mm -hmm. versus the, oh, well, we might, well, we need an we Apple might, watch yeah. just for when we need to know what time it is. Yeah. <laughs> or yeah, or we, <laughs> you know, we might use that, I don't know, 
that pressure cooker or what, you know yeah. whatever that thing oh, is. Yeah. The, wa the waffle iron. Yeah. Yeah. So and that's I have the one item in that I held on to the waffle iron out of spite, I think when we entered the RV, because Ben said, you're never gonna use the waffle iron. I'm like, yes, I love it. I'm gonna use it. It's this beautiful. Have you used it? I think once, <laughs> <laughs> I think first, the yeah. first week we were in the RV. Okay, out of, okay. again, out of spite. Out of like, spite. I'm gonna use gonna it. Well, I, and I, I used it, because I'm the one who makes the waffles. Yeah, you're the uh, one who makes waffles. Okay. <laughs> but I'm realizing that it needs to go. Yeah. It needs to go. Maybe we yeah. just need to have a waffle party. <laughs> thank you guys so much yeah, for thank you. being yeah, part of the video if this is the outro <laughs> if you liked this video or had any comments let us know in the area below this video and don't forget to like subscribe click the little bell and thanks for watching thank you thank you <laughs> <laughs> thank you <laughs>Selby's running around and still some gunshots. So. <laughs> still some gunshots. Nice. Every, gun shots, every boondocking maybe. spot has its quirks. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> Your abundance of jokes you like to share with yeah. everyone. Yeah. yeah. yeah for those who might be lacking jokes. <laughs> dad jokes specifically. Dad jokes. Yeah. Yeah, we have no shortage of dad jokes in yeah. this RV. Yep. Yeah. And Selby won. Awesome. Yeah. No, no lack of whiny dogs. <laughs> Great. Thank you yeah. so much. <laughs> roll, roll a hug. <laughs> roll a hug. Oh, oh no! Oh, we forgot about this. Forgot about we'll the We'll do a hug. Yeah. <laughs>